People seem to forget, if you change today, today will change your life. Hello, welcome to the Self-Belief Chief Podcast. You're here with life coach and author, David Holman. And this week I invited co-founder of Odd Health, Tom Sheppey, to talk about how you can be connecting with personal trainers, even from the comfort of your own home. I know for many of you right now, you want to get into exercise it's not easy for you to you know in the past have gone to gyms or know where to start but actually have a place and a safe space in which you can connect to experts who can take you through a step-by-step process and a step-by-step plan people can help you in fitness and nutrition and many other things to get you to the place where you want to get to and tom provides a very holistic approach to your health and well-being and so i think it's totally relevant at the moment how you can up your fitness, how you can ex- up your sort of exercise level so you can improve your well-being and what is a challenging time at the moment. So if you really want to, as I said, improve your well-being, if you're really look, looking to keep up your fitness goals or you are new to the fitness world and you're really just looking for a way and an opportunity to start a new chapter in your life, then this will be a great episode for you. Right. Hello, Tom. How are you enjoying your quarantine life at the moment? Tell us what that looks like on a day-to-day schedule. I'll be honest, I'm in a lucky position. Um, we Normally, I would be working on my own for a big chunk of the week. So actually, for me, quarantine's working out quite well. I've got a little bit more company uh, than I normally would. And we're also very lucky in London to have a bit of outside space. So I can't complain in the scheme of things, thank you. I'm sure we've all got our, our small little complaints, and I know also living with my sister must be incredibly difficult as well so um, i hope that she's uh she it comes with its pitfalls yes absolutely i know how difficult she could be so uh, but no but it's good to it's good to be it's good to have you on the podcast and really to talk about as the co-founder of odd health really a bit more about an app which i i really like the idea of but particularly at, in the current climate actually finding it really really interesting as a, as a way for people to do two things, connect, which is something people are desperate for, but to actually keep up their, their health and fitness from, from their own space. But I think for the people listening, it'd be great just for them to know a little bit more about you and actually understand, you know, how you started in all of this. So just, just for the people listening, tell us a bit more about yourself. Yeah, of course. Um, so I've sort of always been, I think, maybe a lot of us can relate to this. I've always been one of those people who's had fairly grand dreams for their health and fitness and never really, none of those have materialized for me. Um, But I'd always been very frustrated with the health and fitness industry. I thought there's just so much bad information out there. It's almost impossible to find any good information because of the noise out there. Um, And so I've been, I've been sort of, stewing on that for a while anyway and then a couple of years ago I injured my back which was a reasonably kind of um, big life event for me that's taken you know to now I still still struggle with it but it was that experience in particular for me um, that set me on the path to, to starting Odd Health I couldn't believe it was going to cost me the amount of money it did to <laughs> see the people that um, that were any good at their job at helping me get active again. And we're not just talking here about kind of like spinal consultants and things like that. I'm talking about seeing a half decent physio or fitness coach who was going to help me get active again. Uh, And it was just crazy. I was traveling miles and spending a fortune on it. So I thought, well, surely there's got to be something better out there. Started on that route of looking into it when I realized there wasn't that's when we decided to to start the business and, and find a solution for people that did make it more affordable more accessible and easier yeah. to speak to someone that knows what they're talking about yeah and I, I think for anyone who is trying to start their own thing and we all know like how important it is that your own story connects to it because if you have an idea or something along you know something entrepreneurial which can be a great idea but something you're not actually it doesn't connect to you you're not necessarily passionate about it and you haven't recognized maybe for yourself it's its own importance to people then it's difficult to sort of continue with it through the difficult times that we all go through with uh 
with starting business and, and moving forward with it. So, um, so over the, over the period that you've been working on odd health and, um, and being able to sort of build a, a sort of a base of personal trainers and a base of clients, um, you know, how long has that taken you to, to sort of get to a point where actually you're thinking, yeah, this is something that people are ready to use as people ready to see, how long did it take you to get to a point where you thought, actually, I'm, you know, this is something I can do rather than it just being an idea. Uh, it's a process. And I think it's a process I can, from my experience, for me and the kind of other startup founders I work with who are at various stages, I would say it takes longer than you'd think it does. It's very easy to start very, um, starry eyed and innocent and thinking you're going to take over the world (laughs) and it will be by the end of the month. Um, I would say it takes longer. It took us from kind of concept to even just like founding a business, officially founding it, going through the legal work and uh, applying for things like SEIS and EIS, which are tax relief things. You know, that, that suddenly is something you've never done before. So I think from having the idea to being in a position we're in now, which is users and coaches using the platform, that's been about two years in, in the making. And I mean, throughout that time, I mean, we've had conversations in the past about all the, all the joy and inverted commas of, of, you know, having something you're passionate about and trying to create it and, you know, spending 90% of your time doing all the things that you couldn't have even imagined were things you had to be prepared and ready for. It takes a lot for people to like push through all of those particular barriers and those all kind of those hurdles. So for other people who might be on their journey or their process earlier on with what they're doing and they're maybe hitting those initial hurdles and already wondering, I'm not sure about this. You know, what have you done to sort of keep yourself inspired, keep yourself motivated by it? And what, what do you think holds you up when things get a little bit difficult that make you think, actually, I'm going to be able to push through this, this barrier in this one? Uh, I think there's a lot of things. It's a tricky one. Um, the first thing I'd say, and, and I kind of would really emphasize this to me a couple of years ago, is you just, you, even if you think you're passionate about it, are you genuinely <laughs> passionate about it? Because you might be really passionate about it for a month, six months, yeah. a year, but are you passionate enough about it that when things go repeatedly wrong, which they will, Mm-hmm. Uh, over the course of many months and years, do you still look forward to doing what you do? So I would say, if you think you're passionate about it, check that you are passionate about it. Okay. Um, and it's not super inspiring advice, but um, the oh, other no. thing I'd say as well is everything feels like the end of the world. I'm still now very much trying to kind of get my, get to grips with this and be better at this, but Every time you think you've cracked it, you haven't. And every time you think it's all over, it isn't. It's yeah. somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And, you know, don't absolutely enjoy the, the good moments, but put them in context. And same for the bad moments. What feels like a total disaster a year down the line, you will not be able to. That'll be routine, daily, 9 a.m. You'll have already done that. So mm. I think probably just keep an eye on if you do love what you're doing. Um, keep an eye on why you're doing it you know i think it's crazy to find yourself two years down the line forcing yourself to do something that you now hate uh but you're struggling through it so try and enjoy it that's presumably part of the reason you started it Hmm. i think that's a really good point on that i think a lot of people they fall in love with the idea of owning something or they fall in love with the idea of the the freedom or they fall in love with um you know thinking that it's it's financially you know in a better position was the reality of it is that when you're taking full responsibility of someone i always use the example of a a chef who loves cooking and they love cooking so much that their their, the next idea is actually why don't i own a restaurant and then they go Mm -hmm. and try and own a restaurant and they realize that the being a chef or the cooking was one percent of what owning a restaurant is and you have to make a decision at that point or well, what is your actual passion amongst it is it cooking or is it 
you know is it owning something like that and it's fine if it's you know you try something and you realize actually within all of that it's it's this particular part that i'm passionate about i'm sure in different ways both of us have found things where we had a maybe a much broader picture of what we thought it was going to look like and over time you realize actually if i go down this specific road this is the one that feels more right or this is the one that works for me and so i think that's really important what you said about kind of checking your passion and actually are you passionate about it because the i because the reality is it's not necessarily more freedom it's not more money it's not you know necessarily you don't feel like oh it's super cool that i that i own something because when you have freedom comes actually well what do you have to do with the time to make it all work so you're right when when you have to deal with all of that as well then you've really got to love what you do as well and i think i think that's i think that's incredibly important and so how often how often have you been tested on how much and on how passionate, <laughs> passionate you are um hard to put a number on it often enough more <laughs> often than i've had good reason to <laughs> to be optimistic yeah. um i don't know i think it's the bigger moments that stay with you i've had probably a, a, a few moments where you think it's over it's done and actually, what for me was super helpful actually was I've got a good network around me. I'd recommend that to anyone, even if you're starting sort of business wise, as I was from a fairly low base network wise. Do everything you can to meet people because I started speaking to somebody who was a experienced businessman, um, non-exec chairman on several boards, senior within a public entity. Um, and I told him about this thing, which to me felt like the end of the world. And he said, we can deal with this in the next 15 minutes. And that didn't oh, stop right. it being a big <laughs> deal to me. And, and the fallout emotionally was much longer than that. But get somebody who can help put it in context. Because mm. particularly early stage startup life, the reality is you'll be working on your own or with a small group of people a lot. You need to get out of your own head you need to talk to other people and you need to step away from it to kind of mm. gain a bit of context on things. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think of all the things when I sort of left my corporate job of all the things that I thought I prepared for, I think the one thing I prepared for the least or just wasn't aware would be such a factor was exactly what you just said, which is actually the idea that you, you know, yes, you get to own your own thing and yes, you sort of get the, the, the 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 good and bad moments that come with that but actually if you don't have people around you as you might do in any other job per se or a particular nine to five you actually the, the feeling around that or the feeling that of, of times where you can feel isolated uh i just hadn't prepared for well enough and that's something i had to get much much better at uh, as you said mm -hmm. if you don't do that work or whether it's networking or whether it's just, whether it's networking bouncing ideas of someone or just people there for you to kind of even sound off to, I think is incredibly important because as you said, if it's all in your own head, you know, if you have something where all the ideas, all the concepts, but even the emotions that are connected to all of that, if that's all in, in your head all the time, eventually you'll just become your own kind of obstacle for actually being able to move forward. And as mm. you said just then, exactly what you were saying, which is that something that was you know, a big deal and it was helpful that someone else could tell you it wasn't a big deal, you know, the only thing that ever really complicates things is us as human beings. And so actually being able to get all of that stuff out of your own head is incredibly important, whoever that might be, whether it's family, friends or otherwise, someone to allow you to do that. And I think that's a huge percentage in terms of, I think, people's success as well. I think the success is actually, if you are feeling isolated, one of the things that will make you step away from what you do is if you go, I'm so isolated, why would I be doing this all on my own? I want to be around other people. Mm. And that's the reason why I see people give up on what they do as well. So I think, I think that's incredibly important. And so what I really love about your app is the idea that, especially in the current climate, you know, one of my ambitions, I think, in the future is to have like a, a personal trainer who I have like consistently for a long period of time, someone that I actually really got on with, someone I really connected with, but who could really keep me on top of things health wise. And what I like about your app is that whilst people can, you know, get very specific training, uh, which fits into their schedule and their in in the into their life the way they need it to you actually have someone to connect with and as amongst everything going on at the moment when people are desperate for connection 
actually the bond that someone has with their trainer is incredibly important as well to their well-being as we were just saying having a network of people in your life to support you with what you might be doing um even your a personal trainer can can sort of be that to a certain degree as well as a point of contact as a point of communication so you know from what you've seen in terms of all your research what made you think actually yes this app is something i need was it from the point of view that you know you wanted it was the number one thing the cost was the number one thing actually the connection was the number one thing that actually people want someone that they can trust and maybe you know if they if they're only totally reliant on whoever works at their local gym then it's that person or no one else so your app gives people the yeah. opportunity to so what was like the number one thing from your research where you thought actually if we can deliver that that is really kind of cutting edge and that's something that people are really desperately asking for mm. well it, there's also all of the things that you mentioned i think as you know are things that we have deliberately taken into account yeah. the number one thing i'd say though is the human touch it's the bit that you started with where you can't you wish and this was something i'd always wished that i could afford to speak to somebody who knew what they were talking about on an ongoing basis now you don't have to but i value a close relationship with somebody that you grow to trust mm -hmm. who would be there to support me and help me on an ongoing basis now all the things you said about affordability accessibility and things feed into that because that what means i can do it on an ongoing basis I can't personally or, and, or never could, and most people I know can't afford a personal trainer face to face uh, on an ongoing basis. Yeah, for like a year or whatever. Yeah. But, and then that's the truth that people don't necessarily want to engage with with health and fitness is it's a long term journey. Yeah. Anybody that's going to sell you a four week ab pack <laughs> is, is taking your money. Yeah. There, there's no benefit to that. So, how do I find someone who can actually help me find what works for me? And how do I afford it over a long enough term where I'm going to see some results? So mm -hmm. that's, that's what, that was part of the challenge we took on. And the other part of the challenge as well is that there's a certain aspect of a face-to-face -face personal trainer experience that some people don't like. Um, and I think it can be a, a intimidating environment for a lot of people, even setting, setting foot in a gym, yeah, is yeah. an intimidating environment for people. So, what we wanted to do was cater to people who, as I'm saying, wanted to be able to speak to on an ongoing basis, but also weren't being catered to at the moment. So by putting it in a video call, um, you make it a safe space where people can do it from the comfort of their own home. They can ask questions without fear of judgment. Uh, and you're also able to make it more affordable because, and this is, um, this is a slightly separate conversation now with, with uh, COVID-19, but even prior to that, coaches had on average uh, three hours of spare time a day in their schedules that they wanted right. to be able to monetize, but couldn't. So by able to help them be able to do more remote coaching from anywhere at any time, making that flexible for them, they're able to make more money, but you're also able to offer the service more affordably because you take away all the travel time uh, and you make it easier for everyone. So it was, mm -hmm. It was that kind of combination of win-win to then deliver that human touch, which is, is the thing that is key to what we do. Yeah, I mean, any, it's very much the same as what I do as well. And anyone I speak to for the first time before I even work with them is actually getting them to agree and accept that there is no quick fix and quick fixes don't exist. And, you know, I get people that, I ask people to question, you know, with whatever problem they're facing, have they spoken to a, a coach? Have they spoken to a, maybe a counselor or a therapist or whatever uh, at some point? And they might go, yeah, I, I, you know, I spoke to someone once or twice. And I asked them, okay, well, with what you're experiencing, did you think the problem would be solved in a week or two? And they mm. often go, well, no. I go, well, then, you know, what, what, what's, the, what's the thinking? And why would, you know, why would you spend the money over that period of time? Now, all of those different areas they're, they're all fantastic and they all serve their own use but at the same time no one wants you know whilst we all want to find something that gets us the results as quickly as possible no one wants to feel like they're getting a quick fix when it comes down to it because mm -hmm. if they think about it logically emotionally we yes we want to save money we want to save money emotionally we want results as quickly as possible but logically we know actually 
if, if someone's going to tell me exactly what you said, like a four week, whatever, then maybe I'm actually not going to get the results I want. And I think what I like about what you do and the way you talk about it in terms of the long term is it feels a lot more genuine and a lot more authentic to people when they understand and go, okay, I'm not trying to be sold something here. I'm not trying to be sold, um, you know, a quick turnaround. Um, but actually there, there's, there's something being created here, which actually cares for what, you know, cares about the results that I want, but cares that mm-hmm. actually I'm going to get the level of co- connection that I want as well. And, and over a long period of time. And I think, as you said, trust in all of that is incredibly important. And so, when you talk about kind of uh, kind of the long term uh, goals that people have, I mean, who is your app for? Because there are lots of different people, you know, who've got different fitness aspirations, fitness goals. So who does your app, you know, what does it uh, tailor to? What types of different forms of health and fitness uh, target audience, you know, types of exercise? Who does it? Who is your app for? Well, so our app is for people who are being let down by the current health and fitness market okay and i think it's a fairly recognizable type you've you've tried for years to get into better shape you've probably kept an eye on something like relatively basic like calories um it's often left you feeling self-conscious feeling bad about yourself when really you shouldn't be at all you're in a huge bucket of people who are all feeling exactly the same um we tend to now we cater for all types of experience but in particular, I think that it's a really valuable experience for beginners um, because it is about taking that first step in a, mm. in a safe environment. But we offer, we, so we work to a goal basis. We offer seven different goals, um, be that whether you're looking for weight loss, whether you're training for an event that could be something like a half marathon, injury prevention and management, strength and conditioning. We, we cater to all sorts of goals. But the heartland of our business, no matter how great we make the tech, no matter how sexy the marketing is, is ultimately the professional you speak to at the end of the day. Yeah. So the, I think in themselves, as long as you're working with the right accrediting bodies, personal trainers are an incredibly exciting and well-qualified group of people. I don't know many professions I've ever spoken to where nearly 100% of the people are passionate about what they do. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, but virtual true. trainers are, and they pursue that interest in a, you know, most of them are freelance, and they pay for their own accreditation, and it's an ongoing level of training. But what we have is a very long and strict recruitment process where we work with people who offer something above and beyond. So... If, if, for instance, you know, some of our coaches specialize in pre and postnatal exercise, some of them okay. are qualified nutritionists, some of them have qualifications in cognitive behavioral therapy, um, mental health um, professionals. So we look for people with a really diverse range of backgrounds because we cater to a diverse audience. And the purpose of our app is for you to be able to find someone who works for you and also we operate a pay-as-you-go business model because we don't want to trap people in to paying dozens of pounds a month that they then don't get the benefits of Mm. you only pay for what you want so that people who have got um you know perhaps in more beginner it's less of a barrier for them to get involved and to try the the sessions before they start committing to longer term work with us yeah Okay. That's good. And uh, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's, especially for beginners, you know, it's so hard for the people to even know what they want and actually what, what, what form of exercise or what, you know, how do I even get started? So I think it, I think mm-hmm. it's really important that people have the options and the variety from that point of view. Yeah. It's a marketing challenge for us actually, because what I love is when you speak to people um, after a session, unanimously, they're all massively motivated and inspired. Everybody suddenly feels like, you know, I can, I can actually do this. You know, you've got a vision and, and you can see what direction you're going in. Um, it's getting people to realize that they will feel like that afterwards is a, is a marketing uh, piece for us. But I love getting that feedback from people afterwards mm. when they genuinely feel 
um, that kind of excitement about what might happen. And, and actually, it's a point you were talking about earlier, which I think is really valuable. We can all probably, anyone who's tried to get in shape can recognize that morning or that hour where you thought, oh God, I just really feel like I'm going to do this. I'm going to be up. I'm up for this. And you plan it all out. But because it takes a long time to make any uh, meaningful change, you could be working out hard and eating what you think is a good diet for three months and not really see the results you were hoping. And then you fall apart because um, you, don't, you don't have the confidence that that off-the-shelf plan that you found off Google is working anymore. Whereas the benefit of working with someone long-term is that they're an expert who knows exactly your background and what you're trying to achieve, who's helping you to tailor a program and advice to you and is there to make changes to support you and to motivate you and keep you on track, Mm -hmm. which I think is a massive thing that people underestimate when they start a health and fitness journey. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, one of the things I wanted to get into based on what you just said there is like, yeah, we, we all sort of, everyone kind of nods along to like the benefits of health and exercise and like, Oh yeah, I know I should do that. And I don't mean it from like, uh, the next question from like a physiological or biological point of view, but you know, for people who kind of go, Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, I know I should do exercise. I think sometimes it's helpful to sort of know the reverse of like, not just like, Oh, here's why you should do exercise, but actually these are the reasons why not doing exercise, you know, it can affect us. And so even if it's just from personal experience, Tom, from like a kind of well-being point of view, you know, people who don't engage in exercise, how does it affect you when you're not like involved in exercising? Because I know you do a lot of work on, you also have to like take care of your back as well. So you've got to moderate your form of exercise to, uh, mm-hmm. to accommodate you. So how does it make you feel when you go through like a, a stretch or a period where actually I'm not, you know, my exercise isn't at the peak, like all of us experience when we go through periods where exercise drops off a bit, how does it make you feel? so it it kills me um this probably doesn't sound you know there'll be a lot of people that don't relate to this because everybody's so different and for lots of people it's not health and fitness isn't a main like a big part of your life but I've sort of been well your sister Catherine who I live with has likened living with me to to owning a collie like I have to (laughs) I have to walk every day I have to exercise every day because I have a lot of um energy that needs to be used up yeah and genuinely for me if i'm not ex- if i can you know i'll go for a day without exercising that's fine day two i'll start to come a bit um you know a bit uh <laughs> pent up and then by day three you're walking around just looking to annoy people for something to do <laughs> so that has been a struggle with my back my uh, my urge is always as soon as i get one week under my belt of good exercise without injury I'm, I'm setting a goal for running a Ironman so <laughs> my goal actually and why it's helpful for me speaking to a coach is more to rein me in manage my injury and, and think about long-term yeah. goals rather than that short term I haven't been for a run for two months yeah. I'm gonna go for a 13 mile run like, you mm-hmm. know I, I need to tail it I need to rein it in and be sensible yeah yeah absolutely and I, I think uh, it's the thing people everyone's got that area that they're very confident in and we might have other areas where we're you know we're not just we just don't have the knowledge or we don't have the resources don't have the information or whatever um and i often say to people it's you know it's not always a lack of resources it's the lack of resourcefulness and actually the ability or the or the want or the desire to go and find out more now in the area people are really confident in yeah we do everything we possibly can to go and you know learn to go and learn how to implement to actually put into action and to feel like actually we're an expert in this area and we do that because we've got a specific goal in mind which is again another thing i like about your app is that it's sort of you know goal orientated as well it's not just like oh here's a plan to for this it's actually right finding over a long period of time where can i actually get to and building what's like a what i'd call like a compelling future for someone where it's like actually that's a goal that not just thinking about what can I do over three or four weeks, but over a long period of time. But the other point that's so important for anyone I speak to, which is why I like anything which talks about long-term plans is do people want permanent change? 
Mm. And permanent change only comes about from long-term planning and actually adopting behaviors and habits, which, you know, repeated over a period of time, uh, make a big difference. I remember I went through a phase with fitness where I was only exercising a few times a week. If I missed, if I then had a week off of exercise, my drop off would be massive. Whereas mm-hmm. now similar to you, I, if I, I exercise every day, if I didn't exercise for a week, uh, so usually what I do is exercise three weeks and have a, a week off where I just do other exercise, like low key exercise is I don't really see a shift or a change. And that's the benefit of doing things over a long period of time that you're trying to create permanent change. And I know f- for most people, that's what they want. So it's really good to to hear that. Say there that what you ideally want to get to is a, a stage where the deviating from the good behavior feels odd i don't yeah that's good it's not it. something that everybody does but say for instance if i uh go away for a week or you know we go to glastonbury or something like that and you you are drinking a lot and you're eating mostly just white bread with some sort of meat that that goes in it <laughs> you you come back and you think oh god i could i could absolutely murder a vegetable right now <laughs> You know, that kind of places, I think, where you want to be able to get to, where you naturally gravitate back to the good behavior. And that doesn't come easily. You can get three months of decent health and fitness routine under your belt and it go awry, be that an injury, a holiday, a busy period at work, and and you may well lapse. Um, And then you don't do anything for another three months. So I think that's why it's so important to have somebody there to help you and motivate you the whole time as well. So, yeah, so we're talking about like long-term plans and like permanent change. And so just, just talk to us about some of the people that, you know, you've like, you'll have come across in terms of case studies who've used your app and actually the benefits that they, they've found about having a kind of a long-term plan with someone that they trust and, you know, something they can actually afford as well. I think, I mean, there, there's all sorts of, again it's part of something i i love is the stories that you mm. you get from people being able to get feedback from customers who are enjoying something that you've created or it certainly at least helped create is is a massive buzz for me um i think the the most rewarding thing to hear is it's when someone's mindset has shifted you know it's it's great to hear if somebody's lost some weight that they've always wanted to lose that's fantastic but it's when somebody has um, kind of stopped looking at exercise as something that they needed to do that was a chore, mm. that was a battle, and started to do it as something that they enjoyed, started to do it as something that was just part of their life. Um, that for me is the most rewarding bit when someone's, and I should caveat as well, you know, we've been now working with customers for uh, four months. So we aren't here talking about people who have had a two-year change but when you start hearing people talk about they came in and I spoke some the beginning about wanting to lose some weight and become a size 12 yeah you know, that, that was their specific goal and now they're talking about um, their enjoyment of food suddenly they're talking about uh, self-confidence yeah. those for me I think that's when you start to really think like this person is is really benefiting from what we do because it's actually improving they're saying it proves their life feels too grand, but you know, they're, they're getting real genuine happiness from what you're doing rather than um, just purely focusing on aesthetics. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's cause always it's the, a lot of things that people present as problems are kind of, that's their, their surface problem. And then ultimately what they're looking for is actually dealing with whatever their core issue is or core problem is that stems from that surface problem perhaps. So it is great when you hear those things, of actually it's it's sort of fundamentally altered that thing internally which is either held them back or being problematic and actually you know with the work you do with the work i do it's, it is great when you actually hear like yes they ask you for help in this area and they tell you how as a result of the result it's helped them in you know it's improved their work it's improved their relationships it's improved mm. xyz and and that's when you start to think actually this thing is they recognize for themselves actually how big a stumbling block this had been. It wasn't just like, uh, Oh, it's like, this is just how I felt in this area. This is actually how it affected them in everything. 
mm. that they do mm. and, and, and you know and that's fantastic that's amazing and so just because just from your kind of um maybe some of what you've learned from those kind of case studies and actually your research around health and fitness um, and also your personal experience is your, you said something which I think is spot on. If you feel like you're punishing yourself with exercise, then you haven't quite got to the point you need to yet. And, and actually there, you know, it's great that like your app has a variety of options because people can find the form of exercise and the, and the, and the, and the, and the right person which suits them but actually it's to the point where they actually enjoy it as you said if you need to get to a point where you kind of enjoy what you do and over a long period of time it becomes and you see the results that's part of the enjoyment from your point of view tom what do you think it takes for someone to not feel it feel like they're punishing themselves when it comes to exercise because we've all been in that place at the beginning especially where we're like oh my god this is (laughs) this is absolute garbage so what do you think it takes for not to, to feel like you're not punishing yourself and actually Oh, actually, I really enjoy doing this. Um, I think possibly the simple answer is time. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm always conscious talking about this where, I mean, to hear two people to sitting around talking about how they need to exercise and they, you know, it's part of their lives and they love it, it's so unrelatable to so yeah. many people. Right. And to so many people, if not most people, that just sounds terrible and we sound like assholes. Like, so <laughs> I, I, so plenty of people we work with hate exercising, but they recognize at the beginning that they need to be um, eating better. What they don't re- actually necessarily realize, they often start by thinking I need to exercise. But what they don't often realize is that their diet needs improving, um, the, their sleep patterns, are off they're not um basically that a lot of their life habits maybe around their health and well-being aren't quite maybe where they should be but it might start by feeling punishing but the rewards that come from having a goal and achieving it i think i yet to find someone who has stuck at it who's not turned from a cynic into right almost i think people can be quite evangelical about health and fitness i mean a good example this is i can be more personal about my own mum um than calling anyone out specifically but sure you know my mum uh is of near retirement age and she spent her whole life not being a health and fitness person for some reason she found inspiration about a year ago decided to start doing a bit more exercise and now she loves it. She won't stop talking to me about it. She has been so upset during this period that she's not been able to get to her regular classes. And she didn't like it for quite a while. So I think there's a lot to be said for time to allow yourself to start seeing, um, saying results in the world of health and fitness again feels a bit tacky. Um, but to, to feel genuine rewards, to work hard and earn something, regardless of whether we're talking about health and fitness, I think is always something that people gain a great amount from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. You mentioned the word reward a few times there, which sort of piqued my curiosity, which was that I think anyone we've got to, people have to, probably my, probably my, one, of the, one of my worst traits over the years, which I've had to significantly improve, is actually how does one reward themselves you know because there are things where we enjoy doing them and when everything's going well it's easy to crack on and get on and when things aren't going so well uh but you've still got to do those things and and there are things you enjoy but then things you don't enjoy as much and health and exercise and fitness can be one of those things initially we've got to have ways that we reward ourselves and actually for doing these things so i wanted to as you mentioned it a few times turn it back onto you and you might not necessarily have an answer that comes to your mind maybe it's not not necessarily something you think of in such a way but when it comes to your work and what you do how do you reward yourself because it's something i've certainly had to think about actually how do i reward myself for like the time i put in how do i reward myself for the work i do with people even the bits that i don't want to do what's the compensation I get for that in terms of how I reward myself? Because I think that's an important part of one's well-being is actually giving themselves credit for what they do. So how do you do that? 
That's a difficult question and it's probably not something I do well enough at the moment. Um, I most days wake up thinking about odd health. I, I, I feel like I've probably been dreaming about it. You know, you're suddenly barely conscious and you're thinking about it. Mm-hmm. I go to bed thinking about it. I think about it almost every second. And that one isn't good for your mental health. And two, it makes you really dull as well. No one wants to talk to a guy who only ever talks about his own business. So um, I may be not the best person yet to be, to be answering the question. I think what's super important is to carve out time for yourself yeah. That, yeah. that isn't focused on the business. And as much as you can reflect when you have achieved something, because say, for instance, right, the goal of our business is to be helping millions of people and be a recognizable brand, uh, not just across the UK, but worldwide. Now, have I achieved that? No. So in the context of where I am, there's a lot more to do. Yeah. That doesn't mean, though, that have running a business for two years, going through a seed funding round, building a technology platform that's helping people. It doesn't mean that that all doesn't mean anything either. Mm-hmm. So... Maybe this is a trivial example, but when we uh, raised the money uh, for our seed round last year, my co-founder and I, to be fair, it took us about three months to actually get around to doing it because our heads kept getting down into work again. But um, we just went out and celebrated. And we spent an evening getting a bit drunk, talking about nothing in particular and just being pleased that we'd done it. So I think try and carve those moments out as much as you can. and reflect at least on what you've achieved to this point even if that's just learning like, yeah. have you improved your career prospects or got further down the line or can be proud of something up to this point rather than staring down the barrel of how much you've still got to do mm. i think that's a yeah and i think that's the trap uh, a good thing you highlighted i think that one of the traps a lot of people fall into is it's it's great when you come up with that initial like idea and ambition or goal in any area of life where you think oh my god that would be so exciting to achieve that and then what happens is that we have that initial excitement you also have that um sort of you're not you're not you're not quite yet you're not yet aware of what you don't know so you have the excitement that anything Mm -hmm. is possible then you have the awareness of what you don't know that becomes a little bit daunting then you start learning from those things and i think what happens for a lot of people is that they're always staring at that big goal every day and every day you're not achieving that big goal because you don't achieve that big goal every day um and it's the same with me and it's the same with anyone else that for anyone who stares at that big goal every day it would get you down because you're not achieving that and actually a bit like what you're saying where that isn't the sole focus the way i go about it is sort of i break down that down into well what are the three things that need to happen to make that happen and then what's the thing i can do every day to make each of those three things happen and then at least every day you're kind of ticking those off and feeling like you're building momentum And so I think you're right in the sense of looking at that big goal, which is that, yeah, there's more work to be done, but actually crediting yourself in terms of within that. Well, what, you know, yes, there's no way to reward yourself every day for achieving the big goal because that doesn't happen every day. But like you said, carving out time, but also crediting yourself for the things within that, I think are really important. Mm. And also when it comes to goal setting as well, I think that comes back to network. Unless you've successfully started, run and sold multiple businesses then you don't know what you're doing yet. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. It's a humbling process. And I've actually really enjoyed that um, about it. But you kind of need to, it's all very well and good setting goals, but are they realistic goals? Sure. At the beginning, they probably won't be. Um, in my world of, of digital consumer uh, products, I know two founders well now who have said to me that they spent a huge amount on marketing day one, hugely excited got something let's say 10,000 users using it on day one day two two of them came back day three none of them came back so they'd set themselves an unrealistic goal based on not um not knowing much about the industry or their tech or anything at the time so as far as you can surround yourself by good people as well who can help you set sort of realistic expectations as well Mm -hmm. yeah and so 
as you said, and these other founders, they're having to sort of judge the landscape and the first time around is a difficult thing to do. And one of the things that I think many business owners or, uh, you know, first time business owners, especially we're in this kind of, can't even call it the new age of social media anymore because it feels like it's been around for a little bit now. <laughs> so we don't get to call it, we don't get to say, oh, we're new to this anymore, but it certainly is this completely different animal compared to 20, 30, 40 years ago of, of how you might go about things. And so any previous models that we're going to base our businesses on are going to be off things that are, you know, only recently worked for people. You know, it's not like we've got 50 years to look back on and go, oh, this is how to do this. So I wanted to ask you, you've had to do a lot of work in terms of navigating the kind of the social media space and especially health and fitness is massive on social media. So how has it been mm -hmm. navigating all of that? And actually one, I guess, partly find, trying to work out how to find your space in the market. And you've, you've spoken about actually, well, the specific things that weren't out there and we, we created something to fit that particular need, but how have you, how have you found your, how have you found trying to navigate the social media world? Uh, in terms of standing out as a product or kind of uh, from a founder's perspective of, of all that noise out there? For noise. Talk, talk to me about the noise. Um, so nobody's doing as well as they're making out on social media. <laughs> like, like be it a business, yes. be, it, uh, be it an individual. That's the point of social media. You're living your best life digitally. No one's put, well, some people are, but it's not the norm to be just showing you sitting at home whilst your girlfriend's away for the weekend doing nothing in your pants. You know, that's not what people are doing on social media. So but it sounds I, like that's, that sounds like what your day to day life is. Perhaps. Yeah, I've revealed, I've revealed too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I know from my perspective as well, like I put out, uh, I'm not particularly active on LinkedIn. I think in of itself, LinkedIn brings all sorts of um, cringeworthy. Uh, things to the to the table but it does have its place but people have come up to me and this was you know maybe six months into the business and gone wow it sounds like it's going really well and I'm like well yeah that's the point that that's what <laughs> LinkedIn is for um, and you might be having a tough time at the moment but people aren't putting out things saying oh you guess what never guess what sales are down 20% month on month so I think part of that again is just talking to people um, once you start having a wider network of other people who are in it and you can start having frank conversations, you realize it's not just you who's yeah. working hard every day. Yeah. Um, because if you believe social media, then everybody else is an, is, was an overnight success and it's just not the case. Yeah. 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 I th and that's, a, and that's a huge, that's another particular reason of getting people around you and network of people because one, you never ever want to feel like, you know, you never want to be or feel like you would be the smartest person in the room as a first thing. Now, if you're on your own, you're the only person in the room. So that's kind of out the window anyway, but yeah. you want to you're be- You're also the stupidest. stupidest. Yeah, you're also, <laughs> that's a good, very good point. And um, so, but yeah, you want people around you who exactly as you were just saying that can give you the, the reality rather than being confused by being isolated that, you're going to look to social media to see what's going on there to find your connection and then feel like everyone's on holiday every single day, which they're not. So you're absolutely right on that part on that score. And, um, how, what's great about it though, is like with what I do and with what you do, you know, it just wouldn't have happened for us. We wouldn't have found a way to kind of create something that we're super passionate about. We wouldn't have had so many opportunities so almost on a, t a question of complete, you know, on a complete tangent, what would you be doing if the social media world didn't exist? If you knew like, yeah, back in the day when you could work the nine to five job for 50 hours and get uh, for, for 50 years and get a gold watch at the end of it and all of that stuff, <laughs> what would you be doing back in like, say 30, 40 years ago? Oh, tricky question. Um, I guess that's what I would probably be doing and what I'd like to think I'd be doing. Okay. Um, I mean, I, let's, let's just be clear first and foremost, the nine to five is no bad thing. I think it's very easy for entrepreneurs yes, to get really absolutely. like evangelical yeah. about um, like this lifestyle. There's a lot not great about. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> about, about this as well. <laughs> 
So I, I, I think as long as you're doing something that you take pride in, I've always got a lot of time for people doing that. If we're talking 30, 40 years ago, I'm going to say what I'd like to be doing is summing with animals. I mean, you know, yeah. and I get taken the piss yeah. out for this a lot. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it would be. And it will sound cringy to say some sort of conservation work or something, but it'd probably realistically be something like a zookeeper. I mean, I'd absolutely love that. Yeah. Okay. Or, or David Attenborough, basically. It just, you know, he, he's, he's got about 70 years on you, so he got there first, basically. Well, yeah, if he, we're going 30, 40 years, then I, he's already beat me to yeah, it. If you can sure. take me back further and I can try and topple him, that would be <laughs> ideal, yeah. Although the world would probably be a worse place as a result, so maybe we won't do that. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I, mean I, I guess there's a reason there's not like an animal fitness app. But uh, maybe you, that's mate, the... you say that there probably is. Do you reckon? Okay. In this day and age, if you can imagine it exists, it probably does in some capacity. <laughs> so, um, God, I've, I've taken you all over the place, haven't I? Absolute tangent. But uh, so, <clears throat> when we talk about, you know, so yes, animal animals aside, uh, you're current. <laughs> you're currently. You're currently on your on your particular path now and uh i mean amongst all of this because it's uh it almost feels like with both both what we've been doing i might be wrong in saying this that we've been probably probably feels like we've been doing it for a similar amount of time in some ways um maybe you've been doing it for longer but uh amongst everything that you feel like you've learned going forward um that you would say to try and make it all easier for yourself like yeah, there's no way that you can predict for all of it. Um, so what would you have said to the version of you? I think you maybe gave a, a variation of this earlier, but what would you be saying to the version of you back at the start that would have gone, oh, that would have made it 10 times easier? Hmm. I don't know if it would have made it 10 times easier because you, you might never start in the first place. Yeah, true. Um, no, I, th I think humility is probably the biggest thing I'm still learning um you don't know what you're doing when you start a business as i say unless you've successfully sold several businesses in the past you don't know what you're doing so you need to lose that sense of ego you need to be you have to have self-belief and you have to you know keep going and have conviction what you're doing but you need to be open enough to listen to other people and bring in as many people as you possibly can do. So I think as, the faster you can lose that um, sense of ego, the better. And, and in fact, actually, it's, uh, it's now widely the, the MVP model, so minimal viable product, is, um, is kind of what most people now talk about, which I think in itself is a cliche. But the whole point of that is do something as quickly and inexpensively as you can, because it's probably rubbish. And just start testing it, learning. Um, I would definitely more so than I even did because I, I went in with that attitude. I would even more so. Can you strip it back even more? Can you take less risk? Can you learn more faster? Because the pressure only starts to mount the more you put. You know, if, you, if you've got more financially vested in it, perhaps friends, family are, are vested in it the pressure on you will only become greater. So learn as much as you can, and it will be more than you think it is on a smaller budget. So really, really prove stuff out as much as you can before you, you get seriously vested in something. Mm. That's a, no, I like that. That's a, a very good point. And um, yeah, you just, you just can get pressures from, it, from any angle, really, that you just, you just you wouldn't be aware of. And I think, you know, in terms of... Um, I think in terms of self-care as well, because I, th I think the, a lot of people that I work with fundamentally is they're very, very capable, very talented, very intelligent or whatever. I would say each of them, they're incredibly caring, genuine people. And then it, all it comes down to is like the, the, the analogy of like an oxygen mask coming down on a plane and whose mask do they tell you to put on first and they tell you to put yours on before helping everyone else. And I only mention that because actually just how well we take care of ourselves is such an important part of it. And as you're talking about the pressures and things like that, one, it's not just in terms of your emotional intelligence or resilience or whatever, but actually just clarity 
brings things closer. And I, th- I would echo your point in terms of building as much clarity as quickly as possible by really mm-hmm. diving into it, um, getting the whole picture so that you know what to focus on and being prepared. And I think a lot of in terms of emotional intelligence is actually just being prepared for knowing when you're going to feel stressed for knowing when this might happen you don't know it all the time but if i know if i'm a, an individual who knows that actually through this tough period mornings are really difficult for me okay this is how i'm going to plan and prepare for my mornings i know it's going to be difficult and this mm-hmm. is what i need to put in place to do that and so i'd echo a similar thing actually in terms of really get a good sense of the picture so that you can be prepared both for the practical side of it but also the emotional side of it i think is important and um, mm-hmm. I think everything amongst everything you've said, uh, you know, and, and all of that stuff. And w- when we talk about well, when I was talking about actually being prepared for the emotional side of it, I was talking to Tom prior to this conversation about this, about how difficult it's actually for someone to convince their mind by oh, trying, sorry, try and change their mindset by convincing their mind. And actually the much, much easier way is shifting their body, changing the, the blood flow and the biochemistry and releasing whatever hormones to make ourselves feel better. Uh, and that's why I really like your app and I really like the way that you've gone about it. And I, I think it's a, a real genuine care for the, for the consumer first. And so something that I really want to be able to introduce to my particular clients and, and I will be doing that. But Tom, for people listening who think actually this is something that I'd, I want to seriously look at my health and fitness, maybe with the current climate that they've, like you mentioned with your mum, their health and fitness has been compromised by with what they can do, but actually something like your app is something that allows them to, to keep that up so they don't lose momentum. Uh, whether they're a beginner or whether they want to find a way to carry on and, and build connection connections with trainers that you know that they feel like they have a, a bond with over a long period of time people are interested in all of that where can they where can they find your app uh so the first thing i'd recommend is go to our website it's oddhealth.com uh, that's o d and then health.com um because then you can find out more about us you can see our coaches and you can download the app from there uh, and you can also head to the uh app store or google play store as well and search for odd health there and you'll be able to download us from from either of those good stuff good stuff so i want to thank you again for your time tom and i think uh all of the stuff with your app is is you know particular you know incredibly relevant right now and a lot of the conversations unsurprisingly on this podcast have been around the current climate and I think things that people can introduce in their life that kind of molds around their life whatever it looks like whether it's you know uh, stuck in a small space or quarantine or isolation or when all of this dies down that actually with their busy work schedule that they can actually find ways to keep exercising on the road or they've got a specific health concern and they need to consult with someone about a very very specific thing and they can find the the right type of trainer via your app and so um i really appreciate your time in giving people a bit of a uh, bit of insight into what they can be doing but also for what with regards to entrepreneurs and setting up businesses actually what they can expect on their journey as well which isn't all sunshine you know sunshine and rainbows and it has difficult points but actually along with it like you said and i thought probably one of the most profound points is actually just checking how passionate you are about it and i think all of that is really useful for people to take away so thank you very very much for your time tom well thank you david it's always a pleasure to be called profound so um (laughs) no i'll I'll take that thank you i've enjoyed it